on four is about determination of Ka for a weak acid using, uh, using titration. In this um, titration, uh, we have two part experiment. We are using sodium hydroxide as a base for our titration to titrate a weak acid. But sodium hydroxide is not the primary standard um, because it's going to, uh, primary standard because it's going to absorb water while you are measuring the mass, the concentration changes, so it's not a reliable and primary standard. But after you make the solution, use another primary standard, you do the titration, you determine the concentration of sodium hydroxide, then you can use that sodium hydroxide as standard because it's already diluted, already absorbed enough water, and is not the concentration is not going to change again. So first we standardize sodium hydroxide. To standardize sodium hydroxide, you are using a um, primary standard of KHP. KHP stands for potassium hydrogen phthalate. Molecular mass for that compound is 204. That's the molar mass. So you get the following the procedure. You're going to watch the video, see how much I used. Let's say you use 0.2 gram. If you use 0.2 gram of KHP, you can divide that by molar mass of KHP, and that gives you the number of moles of KHP. Then you dissolve the KHP in water, add phenolphthalein as acid-base indicator because your reactants and products, they're all colorless. So you have to have an indicator. If you're not using a pH meter, you use the indicator. We are using phenolphthalein, which is a very good um, acid-base indicator when you are using a strong base. It's very sharp. Um, it will show the equivalence point. What is equivalence point? Equivalence point is a point of the titration where number of moles of acid equals number of moles of base following the balanced equation. In this balanced equation, we have one-to-one -one ratio. So when we have one-to-one -one ratio, that means number of moles of acid equals the number of moles of base at the coolest point. So we find the number of moles of acid, which is moles of KHP, mass divided by molar mass. And we can use this conversion factor or we can justify and say number of moles of KHP equals number of moles of sodium hydroxide because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. But when you set it up and you cancel the units, it's because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, the numerical value, it would be the same and you don't have to justify it. You just show your work. Molarity of sodium hydroxide can be calculated using number of moles of sodium hydroxide, which you find it indirectly from moles of KHP. Liter of sodium hydroxide solution. How do you find liter of sodium hydroxide solution? You are using burette for this reaction, for, this, for the titration. So you are going to add okay, a flask. So you have your initial reading and final reading. Let's say if the initial reading starts 0, 0, and the final reading is a 32.05, um, final minus initial is going to give you the volume of sodium hydroxide, V sodium hydroxide in milliliter. Then you multiply that by one liter over 1,000 milliliter that gives you the volume in liter. That's what you need. Volume of sodium hydroxide solution used in the titration of KHP, and uh, it has to be in, in liter. So that gives you the molarity of sodium hydroxide. When we have the molarity of sodium hydroxide, we are going to move to second part of the experiment. This diagram also shows that uh, how to fill up the burette, how to look. You're looking for the lowest point of the curve and you want to make sure there is no air bubbles in the in tip, of the, tip of the burette and you are going to start and uh, use 
add enough of the sodium hydroxide until you get to the pink color. So when you get to the pink color, you stop and you record the volume of uh, sodium hydroxide. Burette, it's explained in the procedure and explained in the video for the experiment that needs to be uh, needs to be conditioned. That means you have to wash it with water first. Then you wash it with sodium hydroxide. What's going to happen if you have if you don't wash with sodium hydroxide? You have your sodium hydroxide already standardized. If you have water already in the burette because you washed with the with uh, deionized water, you add your sodium hydroxide. It's going to be mixed with water that was in the burette. Concentration is going to be lowered, so it's not going to be exact number for the sodium hydroxide concentration because the sodium hydroxide is going to be diluted. And we don't want that to happen. So we wash with water first, deionized water, then we wash with sodium hydroxide, then we fill up the burette uh, for, our, for our experiment. So when your burette is, is uh, conditioned and filled up, you are going to set up this apparatus and you have a pH meter. pH meter is kind of, heavy. this cell is kind of heavy, you can trip this uh, beaker. So what I do, I kind of get the wire wrapped around the burette clamp. So it takes the weight of it. I use the, the pH meter as a stirrer also. So I stir the solution. Then I start adding 0.5 milliliters at the time. So I add 0.5 milliliter sodium hydroxide and I record the pH. So make a table because this table is not in data sheet. Everyone knows how to make a table. So you, you put the milliliter of NaOH here and the pH. So if, if at zero milliliter, let's say this is just a assume number is the 3.08. Then at 0.5 milliliter, is going to be like 3.10. Then one milliliter, what would be this number? 1.5 milliliter, what would be the number? So you collect these numbers, okay? You collect it. How many half a milliliter are you going to add? Uh, you are going to watch the video and you will see this, that I usually go when I have, uh, I will stop after I have like a big jump. And what I, what I mean by that big jump is shown in this graph that uh, I use this data and I continue when I do experiment until I see big jump in the, in the pH. So when I see that big jump in the pH, I continue with like four, five, or six for better graphing. I don't want to stop right here. I continue a few more and then I, I stop. After, so you have to have a table. So make sure you have a table. Okay, that's one first. Second, graph. You have to plot the graph using Excel. You have to plot the graph. So you are going to plot a graph. When you plot the graph, your graph is going to be based on volume of sodium hydroxide added, every 0.5 milliliter, and the pH. See, the pH starts low. Why starts low? Because we start with the acid and we keep adding base. Since we add base, the pH is going to slowly increase and there would be like a big jump. And when you have that big jump right here, you would see that equivalence point and you can find the volume at the equivalence point. When you have the volume at the equivalence point, that volume is volume of needed for this titration. Let's say hypothetically, this is 20. Okay, then you divide that 20 by two, that is 10, this is known as V one half. The V one half, which is the half volume, V one half, okay? So you get the V one half. At the V one half, using again the graph, being able to use the graph, you find corresponding pH. So this is the V one half, that's the cross point of the curve. So after you plot your graph, then from the cross point of the curve, you go to the pH. 
line and find the corresponding pH. The pH at half a volume or the pH of a half equivalence point equals pKa. And how do we justify that? Because Ka from a balanced equation of a weak acid because it reaches equilibrium. So we can write a, a um, the acid dissociation constant for the weak acid. And that is concentration of product over concentration of reactant because this is a liquid, we don't write it down. In the half point, at the half point, concentration of the, the conjugate base equals the concentration of the acid. So Ka equals concentration of, of the H3O. So Ka equals concentration of the uh, H plus. And pKa equals pH. How do you go from Ka to pKa? From Ka to pKa, you take negative log. But if you have pKa and you want to go to the uh, go to the Ka, you take the inverse log of the negative pH. So let's say if the pH here hypothetically is a 4.3. Okay, if the pH at half point is 4.3, then Ka, pKa equals uh, 4.3. And Ka is going to be equal to inverse log or shift log in your calculator. And you are going to use negative 4.3, negative 4.3. So this number, it would be number like one times 10 to negative five and one point something, uh, one point something times 10 to negative five, what you are looking for. Okay, so that's, a, uh, that's just a uh, hypothetical number. And the purpose of the experiment is to find the value for Ka. So you have to plot the graph. When you plot the graph, you find the uh, volume for, equilibrium, for the equivalence point, you find the half volume, you find the corresponding pH, and that pH equals pKa. If you take the inverse log of negative of this value, you find the Ka for that particular acid. Yeah.